Hello and welcome back to the Blush Studio. Today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial about digitizing artwork. So you can see I already have this pencil illustration that I've created and I'm going to show you how to digitize it. My first tip for digitizing is I actually recommend working in ink rather than in pencil. Um, you can see there's just a lot more contrast and it's a, it just pops so much more. Your scanner will pick it up so much better and it'll be a lot easier, especially if you're going to vectorize it. Now if you're going for something really sketchy and messy, which is actually what I'm doing here for this um, project, then pencil is fine, but as you'll see, I run into a lot of problems. Another quick tip, if your scanner struggles to capture the whole image, go ahead and draw a quick pencil line all the way around it, and it makes it a lot easier for the scanner to pick up. Not really sure why, but that's worked for me in the past. All right, let's get started. So to create this design, I'm going to scan, and it doesn't really matter if you're doing color or black and white, um, if you're doing a pencil sketch, but the important thing is you need to do 600 dpi at a minimum. Um, I believe my default was at 300 dpi, but I had to switch it to 600. And um, this is just in my printer settings. I would check your manual if you can't find it, or um, yeah, just kind of jump around and you'll kind of figure it out. So because this illustration is rather large, I'm going to do it in two different scans. So we got our first scan done, and we're working on our second one. And once that is done, I'm going to take them from my scanner um, workspace and take it to my desktop. I'm just gonna make sure that these are looking good and it didn't like crop anything off. So I'm looking at the edges, now right here on this corner of this leaf, the tip was chopped off, but I can take this other leaf tip and Photoshop that on, so I'm not worried about that. So now I'm in Photoshop. Um, I'm using CS5, and you should be able to do this tutorial and follow it with CS5 or anything later, so CS6 or the cloud. Um, if you have CS4, it might be a little bit different, um, but, and if you have CS3, I think it's definitely different, but. Let's get started from here. So we're gonna to go to Photoshop. Okay, so if I go to File, Automate, I'm going to select Photo Merge. Now, if your whole file fit inside of your scanner with one scan, then you won't have to do this. But just because this is something that I do very frequently, um, and I always recommend working larger than you actually have to, I'm gonna show you how to do this, just because it's an extra step that I do a lot and I think it's helpful. Okay, so Desktop, and I have my two files right here. So I'm gonna select them both, open, and I want to blend images together. So make sure that's here. Um, I do have auto perspective on here. Um, and I haven't really played with a lot of these. I have had to use collage when I was working with different items, but in general, auto works really well. If you have a whole folder of images, um, you can select a folder without having to like click on every single one, which is nice. But for now, we just have these two images and the computer will do most of the work for us. So I love this option because it's quick, it's easy, and I like don't have to do anything. So here we go, all of the images are blended together. Um, now one thing I mentioned with the initial scan is that if something like a tip like this is cropped out, I'm not usually worried about it. Um, I'm more worried about getting kind of, if there's something a little bit more, like details more like this might bother me a little more, or like um, fuller petals, but something that's just kind of a tip, I can, you know, take this one and merge that onto there. Okay, so now these two items, these are two different layers that they use to merge together the two images. I hit Command E to merge those together, just so that it makes my file a little smaller and everything moves a little bit faster. Now, just to kind of make things easier, I'm going to go to image, rotation, and 90 to go 90 degrees counterclockwise, just so that it's straight up and down and a little bit more even. Let's see, now these, this like gray and white checkered section, um, that's just where there's no paper. And so I'm actually just gonna crop that out, make sure that there's nothing up here <laughs> So I cleared that so I don't have like an automatic size that it's trying to stick to. I'm gonna try not to crop out anything important. Um, this is just to kind of keep things nice and clean. I just like to kind of get rid of any mess, if you will. 
or any distractions when I'm trying to work and clean up these files. Okay, so it's looking a little bit better. I'm going to hit Command L, um, and this is just the levels. You can also do levels, let's see. So image adjustments, and I thought it was, there we go, levels. So I usually hit Command L. I'm going to take this section, and I'm gonna move it up quite a bit. This is going to darken my deepest shadows. So my deepest areas, that's going to darken that, which is my illustration, which is what I want. I'm going to kind of lighten some general areas or play around with this one. I'm not sure if I want to play with that yet. And then I'm going to lower this one right here. So I'm just using my arrow keys on my keyboard. Just do this quickly and figure out kind of where I want this to be. So I don't, if you go too far, you start to lose some of that detail in there. And that's not what we're going for. I just would like to get rid of some of some of the, like the dirt in here um, and the paper texture that I don't need since I'm going to be vectorizing this illustration. Just trying to find kind of a happy medium there. And I might, so like this is kind of those mid-tones. Do you see how that kind of desaturates everything? It's a lot more dull. I'm actually going to pull it back in. Uh, let's see, do I want to make it darker? Not really, I think I like it like that. All right, so once I've messed with this and it's right where I want it to be, I'm just gonna hit okay and take a look at it. So now this is when I want to clean up anything that got chopped out or if there's anything. So this little smudge right there, I'm gonna take my eraser tool and making it bigger with the bracket you can also make it bigger up here. This is when you kind of clean up anything that got kind of yucky. This is why in general I recommend using um, ink if you're going to be vectorizing an illustration um, or scanning it and digitizing it. The contrast helps to kind of get rid of any of these smudges or um, any like paper texture and it doesn't create this frame the way pencil does. Um, for this project, I don't mind because I'm kind of looking for more of a sketchy look. But definitely, if you're going for something clean and crisp, it's a lot easier and a lot less time consuming if you use ink. So if you have any questions about shortcut keys, I will try to tell you what I'm doing when I'm doing it, but I was a graphic designer for many years and still do a lot of graphic arts work. So I don't really think about it when I'm using these shortcut keys. It's just kind of like walking for me. So if there's anything that I forget to mention, like what I'm doing or um, just specify it a little bit, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I'll let you know what I did. So we're just cleaning some of the bigger areas up again. Oh yes, I want to get this guy. So I'm going to, let's see. So I hit Command T and I'm just gonna shrink this whole thing a little bit. And that's just so that I am able to take this section and plop it right there and just fix that tip that we lost with the scanning process. So this is just a shorter, um, I'm using Command M which is the rectangle select tool and I hit command C for copy and command V for paste. And then I'm going to take my black arrow and move that over here. Command T will allow us to transfer that, transform that. Uh oh, my toddler's up. And there we go. That works. So I'm gonna hit command E again to merge these two layers together. Okay, so now that this is about as cleaned up as I think I'm going to get it, I'm going to use my lasso tool and I'm just going to kind of select around this. This is just like a quick cheater way to kind of clean up this area. And I don't need my signature in there, so I'm going to take that out. 
So that way I have an old scanner and I in college used a project where I was scanning loose tea leaves and occasionally I'll just get random chunks of tea in there still. So I have this whole section selected. I want the outside so I'm going to hit Command Shift I and that is to invert it. Invert the selection so now all of this exterior part is selected and I'm just going to delete it. And then to clean up the rest of this, just to try and clean it up a little bit more, I am going to hold down on the eraser button on the sidebar and hit magic eraser. And then I'm going to make sure that my continuous button is selected um, and then click the white. So since I hit the continuous, only things that are connected are going to disappear and this just kind of gives me a little bit more control. I'm kind of a control freak. Um, but that looks pretty good to test it. I'm going to put a solid color behind it, make sure oops, that we didn't lose too much detail. Hmm. It might have been a little bit too much, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to take this down to five. So that should work. I'm going to take off continuous and that means that any color, so I'm going to hit that and any color that's matched for my entire piece, um, any of the white will be selected. So even these petals inside here that are kind of trapped by the pencil marks, those will all be cleared out. So again, we're going to double check, make sure we didn't lose too much. That's not too bad. It's a little bit light and I'm a little worried just because I did it in pencil, that it will be too, too light for the, um, for Illustrator to pick up on. So I'm going to copy it and hit multiply. And that just helps to darken everything up a little bit without adding any extra width. It just deepens my illustration overall. Command E to fill that in. And I'm just going to delete that layer. We don't really need it. File save as rose tissue illustration. I'm going to save that as a PNG. Save and we're all set. Um, I like to do PNGs or um, a lot of printers prefer a PDF. Um, so I like to do like an editable, an editable PDF. But one thing I love about PNGs is that it keeps the transparency. So you can see, um, you can see back through to my desktop where in this one it's not transparent so you can't see that. Um, so I like that that's saved and ready to go. Since a lot of the stuff that I do is digital or um, I do kind of some web stuff, just having it saved as a transparent PNG, it's very easy to transfer to a PDF and it's a smaller file size. Um, or I can like switch into a JPEG if I'm printing something. Um, that's just, for some reason, that's just always been my favorite way to do it. So that's what I've been doing. But always check with your printer to find out what it is that they are looking for and what they prefer. So for this project, I'm working with no issue to create some custom tissue. And I want to start creating. So let's find out. I want to make some tissue. And I'm going to create my own design rather than work on one on their computers. I always find that frustrating just because... I've worked with the Adobe Photoshop system so long, um, that's just a lot easier for me. So upload design. And if you're interested in your own custom tissue, um, I'll have them linked down below. I really like them and they have um, really a heart for reducing their carbon footprint and being really eco-friendly. So I know I want this standard file size. And this is what it tells me the size they want it to be. So 20 by 30 inches. But I don't know how they want the bleed. Like they have a bleed here, but I don't know what the size is. I'm going to keep looking. Okay, so here's a two centimeter bleed all around your designs. In the U.S., it is standard to have like a quarter inch. Um, so, but I always double check because sometimes they're different. Photos must be at least 300 dpi. Vector PDF. So that's what we're going to be working on in just a moment. 
and then specify the Pantone up to two colors. Okay, so here we go. So here's our standard size, and then they want the two centimeter bleed on both sides. I'm going to download their design template. And again, because it's going to be a vector, I wanna make sure that I'm downloading the Illustrator file. Okay, so one thing I like about just downloading the standard, and most printers will have a template for you, um, is that they specify where the bleed area is, and that just helps a ton when you're trying to figure out how to create all of this, and like what's gonna be included on your tissue, or your printing, or what's not. So for this one, I'm actually gonna turn off this layer because I find it distracting, and I'll just use it to kind of double check um, later. But I will, Let's take the transparency down so I can see through it. Okay, now that we have our file ready and we have our guide set as a separate layer and the transparency is down on that one, I'm gonna lock that and shut that off. And on this layer, we're going to add file place, our illustration. So rose tissue illustration, we're gonna place it we're gonna get started on our actual vector. So to vectorize this, the nice thing is you can just hit live trace. It's gonna take a while because it's a larger image. And then if we look closely at this, you can see I'm missing a lot of detail in here. Not quite what I'm going for. So to fix this, I'm going to hit up here, this little tracing option is just a window with kind of more details. Um, the first thing that I usually touch this last, the first thing I do, I found that for path filling, I just like four pixels, I don't know why. Um, corner angle I don't usually touch, and then right here I do touch this. So the minimum area, that's just um, the width of the smallest area that it touches. Now for, if you're doing a letter press, they might have a specific pixel width that they want you to stay within. Um, or for wax seals, you'll want to keep this a little bit hard or larger, but because this is an illustration and I'm just printing, I'm actually going to move that to one. And I'm going to hit ignore white. All right, let's see how this looks. Okay, so since we moved our minimum area up, you can see that these sections are starting to show up now and they look sketchy, which is kind of what I'm going for. Again, we've talked about how I really want it to look illustrative, and so I do want to keep that. I do want to have a little bit more detail in here, so I'm going to move this up. This is the threshold, and the higher you go, usually the darker it is, um, and if you go lower, it, you'll see less detail. So that's still loading. Let's give that a second. All right, and you can see that that's a lot darker. I do, however, run the risk of picking up some areas that I might not want. Um, so again, this is why if you were going to, if you knew you were gonna do this for letterpress, I would use ink, um, but I did pencil just to kind of show you why I say that and why I prefer that. Okay, so from here, I kind of like where that is. I actually wasn't expecting to. I am going to put this down to zero just to see how it's gonna look. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I kind of like, I was able to get a little bit more detail in these veins of the leaves and um, on the petals themselves. So we're gonna keep it there. Now this isn't a vector yet. I can't edit any individual points on here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hit expand. And you can see all these little dots in here. Now again, if I was gonna do letterpress, I don't want this to show up on the plate, so I'd wanna get rid of all of those. But because it's gonna be printed, it's not a big deal. Now the great thing is with a vector, again, you can edit individual points. You know how all these points just like, um, it, they're all paths. Um, and you can adjust the color. So I am going to adjust the color to be something a little bit lighter because I want it to be kind of a soft um, pattern on my tissue. I don't want it to kind of hit you in the face. I do want something that's a little warmer though. So let's play around kind of more of like a dove color. Let's see. Oh, 
Okay, that's closer to what I'm actually going for. I will have to find a Pantone color because that's something that um, no issue specified, and so I'll definitely make sure that I do that. Now that my file has been digitized and I, there's nothing that I like really want to fix, this would be fine if it printed like this. I like the sketchiness. I like that it's um, a little bit more fun and organic. Now it's time to create my design. I want to make sure that anything that I want printed um, doesn't go beyond this line in this red area. All right, so now I have my pattern done. This is how I want it to show up. I'm going to double check where everything ends. So I don't want it to be too awkward. So if those were kind of off a little bit more, um, I'll just scoot it off just a touch more. If it was more like that, um, I would definitely want to just like get rid of it just because um, that little tiny section there would be kind of awkward and look more like a mistake rather than like leaves falling off the page. So that one's good. That's fine. All right, it looks like we're good. So I am going to actually delete this layer and then save it. And now we are going to upload our design. And that's how I digitize my artwork. As you can see, the tissue paper turned out beautiful. I'm really, really happy with it. I feel like the quality is excellent and I just feel really good about the fact that I'm using tissue and supplies that are very eco-friendly and helpful for the environment. And one thing that's really cool, with every order, they um, plant a tree. And so you get to choose like where you want your tree to be planted. And they have a couple different sections about where they're planting trees. And um, it's really exciting. I love that they have this mission. And um, I was really excited to partner with a company that has a mission I can stand alongside. So again, I'll have their link for their website down below and you can read a little bit more about them. Um, I have loved using my tissue and my stickers so far. I actually got stickers to match and kind of coordinate with this design and I'm so excited to use this and send it um, to my clients. It's perfect for Christmas orders and um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, that you found it helpful and that um, you'll be able to kind of recreate this these steps on your own. If you have any questions, again, go ahead, leave that down in the comments for me down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And until next time, happy drawing!